Now let's go to Victoria. Uh, Premier Jacinta Allen yep. is considering a land tax and stamp duty exemption for those who identify as Indigenous as part of coming treaty negotiations. The lunacy in Victoria never stops, but let's not forget Victorians voted against the voice, Gary. The last thing they want to see is a treaty, but here we are. And uh, also must yep. be noted, land tax rates here have soared. Victoria has got the biggest debt of any state by some margin. And you can soon have some very wealthy individuals who claim Indigenous heritage not paying property taxes. That seems crazy. Oh, I've done my ancestry DNA and I can't find a stripe of it, so I'm really de devastated about it. But look, Victoria is the place Sad. to flee for a lot of reasons. It's, it's pretty simple. But this is the sort of divisive thing the left always does, Rita. They want to divide us up into little groups, little tribes, and have us suspecting the other and, and being narky towards the other. And yet we should be finding the stuff we've got in common. That's how you actually build a community is out of the common ground that brings us together. So treating people differently because of race, this kind of property apartheid is not a recipe for keeping a community together. It's going to create a lot of angst, a lot of anger. So if you voted no to the voice in Victoria, it's probably time to vote no to this dreadful left-wing Labor government you have in Victoria as well. But then the Liberals have got to get their act together. So as the Arabs would say, inshallah, God willing, that will happen. Well, yeah, let's just see what the Liberals do because at the last state election, <laughs> they were all for the treaty. They were all for it. And it took them some time uh, after uh, the voice yeah. referendum to uh, walk away from it. That's how weak they are. Now, the war yeah. on property owners yeah. continues. Uh, we've got the project yeah. giving a platform to some dude who wants squatters to claim vacant houses. We've got state governments uh, increasing taxes. And then there's the interest rate hike. So it's... Little wonder that so many property investors, mum and dad investors, are fleeing the market, opting to put their money elsewhere. That trend is particularly evident in Victoria. One in four landlords sold a property last year. And what's happened in Victoria is going to happen in other capital cities too. The Daily Telegraph reports today that landlords are selling off uh, and that's going to hit renters hard. Not only will renters continue to experience heightened competition, but rental costs will increase further. Gary, it's almost like demonising property investors has backfired. And the pathway to personal wealth is property ownership, as, as you know, only, like, 4% of the world own, actually own their own home. So Australia was way up there. If, you know, the richest 4% in the world actually own their own home. So Australia has a much better figure than that, but they're trying to kill us off. They're trying to kill off suburbia. They want everything to be grey and bleak and institutionalised, a bit like it was in, in the sort of Soros youth and the mindset of the, 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 the kind of Soviet block building uh, idea. And, and people feel very disoriented. Young people don't feel encouraged. They feel like they're never going to be able to own a home. They will. They will own a home as soon as government stops trying to take money off people before they can get that home. And uh, be it compulsory superannuation, be it high stamp duty, be it all of these other onus requirements, any wonder... People are bailing out. And I know people in Melbourne have done exactly that. They've said, I'm going to sell it, I want to get out, because right now if they want to rip out a wall and bring an elephant into the lounge room, they can do it, and I'm just the owner of the house, I can't stop them. So it's pretty well discouraging that kind of private investment, and, and people are voting with their feet and walking. Well, yes, they had a whole raft of uh, new requirements that uh, transferred pretty much all the power into the hands of tenants. And you're right with the, with the pet... Exactly. policy that's uh, just a small part of it but yeah you, you can't even say no I don't want a pet in my property you've got to go to the tribunal and and request for them to approve your decision on your property I mean it's crazy now let's talk about this interesting it's case wrong. out of Tasmania their museum of old and new art Mona 
is being ordered by the court to allow people who do not identify as ladies into their ladies' lounge exhibit. The exhibit is an art installation in which female patrons are pampered by male butlers, served champagne and offered exclusive access to some of the museum's <laughs> most prized artworks. As a commentary, we are told, on the many male exclusive spaces that have barred women in the past, but Jason Lau didn't like this policy. He took legal action against the museum, claiming he was a victim of discrimination because he could not experience the artwork as women did. And Gary, he won. This is one for the uh, for the men. <laughs> well, good luck to him. Look, you know, the left would actually like to have a museum for old and new genders, and they'd call it Mong. It's real simple, wouldn't they? they just call it the Mong, not the Mona. Uh, look, I, I, I understand the anger, and there's real anger about this kind of hiving people off on one of the 75 genders, and they've all got to be treated in different ways or same ways or whatever they want to do. Uh, people just want to have a whinge, don't they? But, look, I, I don't mind the guy taking it on because it's kind of sending the whole thing up, isn't it? it really but I think women and girls should be allowed to be women and girls and men and boys should be allowed to be men and boys and they all should respect uh, the other gender or indeed possibly the other genders depending on their their take on all of this but I know people who've looked at uh, all of this and say they're non-binary and so therefore they can go anywhere they like uh, Rita you just can't make this nonsense up you just can't make this nonsense up pretty simple I would bet any amount of money that if that dude, uh, looking just as he does, said, I, I identify as a woman, they would have allowed him in because uh, judging by... Right. Uh, well, I, yep. I could be making assumptions, yep. but, but judging by the politics of the, of the artists here, I'm sure they're not one to actually be very protective of female-only spaces. Uh, as, as long as you identify as a no. woman, you could have come in. But... Uh, He's fought it and yeah, he's won. Okay. Now, let's talk about the uh, serious <laughs> issue of uh, health funds getting record numbers of complaints. The complaints have skyrocketed in the past year. Australian reports there's been a 27% jump in just 12 months. And nearly a third of those complaints were directed at Medibank. Uh, Gary, what's driving this jump? Well, I think people are feeling awfully invested in private health insurance and I, I think private health insurance should be nurtured because it's absolutely critical to the health task uh, in Australia. So if you're starting to fund, you know, thousands of dollars a year more than maybe you were a few years ago, you're of course going to feel as though all parts of the service need to be questioned and you want to have that relationship working. And whether Medibank is is really uh, measuring up to people's expectations. It's up for the consumers to speak out. You know, it's. I really am sick of the rant in the media against private health insurance. We have a health system that relies on those who can afford it to do it. I still think we should bring it back to the idea of 30% subsidy for all participants into the private health uh, system. I, I think people should be able to claim it as a tax deduction against their taxable income, uh, no matter what their income happens to be, because we need as many healthy people, not just as many wealthy people in private health that is possible. But the health funds have got to realise it's a market out there, and uh, I'm sure they do. Uh, the big ones, I think, are getting smarter about this, and the small ones are still as agile as they've always been. But I, I think it's great people are complaining, uh, Rita, because they're, they're, they're taking ownership of the way the health funds work. Good on them. Well, that the cost has skyrocketed, and the, the, with the pressure on it, budgets, I can understand why people are pulling out of that. But that just puts an enormous extra strain on on the public system. Strain on now, the public. Now, before you go, Absolutely. World Netball, um, World Netball made the very sane, logical decision to ban transgender players from the international female level. They've done that to ensure fairness and safety. Their decision comes after a detailed view of the science and consultation with experts. Uh, Gary, we're critical of sporting bodies that ignore the science and pander to the activists. And I think here we should applaud 
those that make the right call. And it has to be said, it's a courageous call because they're going to have the activists come for them, but their priority is obviously to protect women's sport. Uh, Rita, the louder the activists yell, the more you know they've got the, the, the right decision in place. And look, as a father of a, a, a woman uh, who herself is the mother of a couple of girls, I want those girls and those women to be able to participate with others who are the same kind of physical makeup and able to participate in sport on a fair and equal footing. The idea of some bloke declaring himself now a woman and he's able to compete on the sporting field as a woman is just... Uh, it's just a joke. And it's such a small group of people who want to do that, uh, despite, of course, uh, the potential for violation in change rooms and, and other environments in and around the sport. Look, by any mm. measure, uh, a lot of what are, what's been going on here has been driven by activists who are trying to disorient our society, trying to destroy our society and make us question our beliefs and the things that created the society that was strong until all of this rubbish kept going. And, and I think good on netball for staring it down. I just wished a, wished a few other sports would be also equally strong because the players, the participants, their families and supporters need that certainty. And frankly, in a bigger, broader sense, our world needs that certainty. The idea that we're able to declare whatever we are and be it for the day just, just makes no sense. And uh, we've just got yep. to stare it down, Rita. Stare it down. Absolutely. Gary Hardgrave, always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you.